Hi everyone, my name is Cassie Guttner. I'm the Director of Global Implementation Research here at Veeve Healthcare. Today I'm gonna to be giving you a brief overview of implementation science and HIV. So you may be wondering why we're talking about implementation science. So thinking about translating innovative scientific discoveries into routine clinical practice is a challenge. Implementation science, which is the study of methods to promote the integration of research findings into healthcare practice and policy, is what we're going to be talking about today as one way to effectively and efficiently close the gap between HIV research and care. So why might we need this? Well, we know that less than 50% of evidence-based interventions actually get put into general usage. We also know that um, only 20% of medical research dollars make a public health impact, which is a huge discrepancy between the amount of effort put in and the real world impact that it has. So within HIV, we know that we have highly effective treatments and preventions, yet not everyone who can benefit from them are actually receiving them. So part of these statistics really highlight the fact that there is this translation gap or this implementation gap. And what we mean here is really this mismatch between what we know works and what we're actually achieving in real world care. So the great news is that we know that a person living with HIV who starts antiretroviral treatment today and obtains virologic suppression has the same life expectancy as an HIV negative person of the same age. However, we also know that there are estimated to be 38 million people living with HIV in 2018, and 38% of them were not accessing treatment, and 21% of them didn't know that they had the virus. Additionally, when we look at data from the United States, we know that despite a 300% uptake, in PrEP between 2014 and 2015, it was still significantly underutilized, meaning the number of people that could have benefited from it were not having access to it or receiving it. So what are the challenges to implementing HIV care? Well, we know that the delivery of evidence-based practices for anything are complex. Everything's always in fluctuation in the world, and that's no difference with HIV and implementation science. So here are a few examples of different complexities that you might encounter. First is culture. There's all sorts of culture that can come into play here in terms of the culture of the individual patient, the provider, as well as the larger system in which they're trying to receive care. Additionally, we think about the economics. Again, this can be multi-level impact, not just related to the patient, but also the larger system that they're in and trying to receive care in. Behavior is another huge component here. We know it's not easy to change behavior. And again, this is something that impacts both the patient and the provider. If a new treatment is available and a provider has a behavior of um, being used to supplying the same type of treatment or providing the same course of treatment, it may be difficult for them to shift the same way it may be difficult for a patient to shift by thinking about a, a new either preventative measure or an HIV treatment. Gender and social circumstances also play huge factors here and need to be thought about on an individual and context specific basis. And the political environment in which somebody is trying to receive or provide care can also have a huge impact on implementing HIV care. So how can we help bridge this implementation gap in HIV? We know that within implementation science, these implementation strategies are key. And implementation strategies are really the tools we have to help people get the innovation in their hands and use it properly. While this is by no means an exhaustive list of examples here, what you can see is four different important examples to help us bridge this gap in HIV. The first one listed here is engaging directly with patients. So patients are the expert on their own experience and taking this into account when thinking about doing research on implementation of HIV care, as well as enacting it in the real world is crucial. If we're not taking into account the patient's perspective, we're likely not going to be hitting the mark. Supporting HIV healthcare providers is another great example. This might be something simple about listening to them, understanding what small changes might be larger, meaningful, shifts for them in their practice, in their education. All of these different things are important to understand because if the provider is not actually able to implement this change, there's a very low likelihood that their patients are ever going to benefit from it. The next example on here is modifying implementation dependent on context. 
Again, this is where flexibility comes in. We know that there's never going to be a one-size-fits-all solution for almost anything, and the same goes here. So we want to make sure that the implementation strategies that we're using and the things that we're trying to implement have some flexibility so we can really figure out how to support its integration regardless of the context, whether it's in a hospital in the US or Europe or in sub-Saharan Africa. Lastly, we really want to think about working with stakeholders during implementation. So this is an ongoing process and it should be a collaborative process. And all of these small things, the communication constantly with the stakeholders trying to implement a new procedure is going to be more helpful in the long run. So the next question that people oftentimes ask is, well, how do we actually measure implementation success? Oftentimes people are doing real world applications of implementation, but they might not be doing implementation research where they're measuring their success or their change. So there are a number of different implementation outcomes, and here we've just listed a few of them. So acceptability is really the perception among implementation stakeholders that the innovation that's being implemented is something that is agreeable and satisfactory. If you don't have acceptability of a new implementation innovation, you're likely not going to have it utilized. Fidelity is another key outcome that's oftentimes included in implementation research. This is a measure of how well people are adhering to the way that it was intended to be delivered. Is it being done competently and are they adhering to the protocols? If they're not, that's a really key important factor to understand what might be perhaps contributing to the success or lack of success in a particular context or research study. Cost is another really important outcome. So imagine that something might cost um, a lot in the beginning of the innovation, but could potentially save money over the long run, which would make a huge public health impact. So we have to understand where cost is coming into play. Is it continuous throughout an innovation? Does it peak at certain parts? Or is it potentially cost saving in the long run? And the last thing on the slide is sustainment. This is a key outcome to consider. What happens when we leave the environment in which we're trying to support a new implementation innovation from being put into a context? If this cannot be sustained when any additional support is taken away, there's going to be a little likelihood that it sticks and makes that public health impact. So these are four examples of key implementation outcomes that we want to consider. So how can we end the HIV epidemic? So Carlos Del Rio put it very well. He said, undoubtedly, effective implementation is our greatest challenge to ending AIDS. So implementation science can help us achieve the 2030 targets of reaching 95% of people knowing their HIV status, 95% of people that know their status getting on treatment, and 95% of people on treatment being virologically suppressed. Additionally, it can also help decrease new infections. So I realize that this has been a very brief presentation, but hopefully you're starting to get a sense of how implementation science can truly help us end the HIV epidemic. And perhaps you might actually be involved in some of this already or plan to be involved moving forward. However, if you're wondering what this might look like in practice, when we take away just the jargon and start talking about what this looks like in a study, I wanna make sure you leave here with a great example of that. So there's currently a VIV sponsored study looking at the implementation of HIV self-testing in an emergency department in Jamaica. So the implementation challenge here is that there's really this need for a comprehensive program of HIV self-testing to increase the diagnosis and linkage of people living with HIV to care. And so in collaboration between the emergency department, researchers, clinicians, and the Ministry of Health in Jamaica, this study really began to take off. So what they decided to focus their study on here was three main aims. Some of these may sound familiar based on what we've previously talked about. Their first aim is to study reach, adoption, fidelity, and cost of HIV self-testing in the emergency department. So one of the key things here is that they're really looking at focusing on um, reach and adoption, which are newer terms. So what we mean here are how many people are getting access to the HIV self-testing and how many people are actually using it. These are key factors that we haven't previously talked about today. The second aim here is to evaluate an implementation strategy, whether it's adopted and how the facilitators and barriers of HIV self-testing 
in the emergency department come into play and whether the implementation strategy can support overcoming the barriers and supporting the facilitators to help the process along. And lastly, the third aim is to assess the clinical effectiveness of HIV self-testing in the emergency department to identify undiagnosed HIV positive patients and their secondary contacts and then successfully link them to care. So the project setting here is the University Hospital of West Indies in Kingston, Jamaica. The process of, is a bit more complex than I'm going to talk about today, but there are some key things I just want to point out here. So what they're trying to do is get patients that are interested in um, HIV self-testing to enroll in the study and they will engage them through emergency room department teams as well as indirectly through advertisements on the televisions, as well as flyers in the clinic. They will be offered three HIV self-testing kits so that they have access to it themselves, and then they can also provide this to a friend or family member that may be interested. And this is a really key component to that reach and adoption that they're trying to study here. So the sample um, aim is to get around 600 patients engaged in this treatment. And the really interesting thing about this study is the long-term objective is both kind of local as well as national. So what they're hoping to do is develop this program more locally to understand how to get this reach, adoption, fidelity, and understand the cost of this program, and then use this as a basis to scale this up to the rest of Jamaica. So I appreciate your time today. I hope you feel like you've learned something about implementation science and how it applies to HIV and hopefully we'll talk with you soon.